Hey guys, Emperor Takashi here, and welcome back. Today we're doing episode 5 of Lucid 9. Alright, well, let's get to it. A sudden deathly chill pervades the room. My second major fox paws of the day, apparently. People care. Are you sure? Because the way I see it, tapping two buttons doesn't exactly make you... Yet. Yeah. Post your daily lives all you want. If you're not someone important, you'll probably don't care too much, to be honest. They care. They care, damn it. No one cares about you, Misaki. No one cares about you. <laughs> don't say nothing different till you pat yourself. Wait, what? Wait, wait what? 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 Uh, what? Don't say nothing? Does that mean say everything? Say something? Hmm? It intends, Misaki. Wait, what? But the conversation grinds to a halt when Misaki's phone trills in her hand. She immediately regains her composure. Kazehaya speaking? Yes, understood. I'll be there in five minutes. Ugh, I really don't get along with her type. <sighs> she cuts the call and shoves her phone into her pocket, looking me square in the eye. I must go. Duty calls. Yes, sayonara. Get the fuck out of here. No one wants you here in the first place. Duty? What kind of duty? My employer has a job for me. Job? Now, what about? What about school? Oh, I'm sure they'll excuse me this one. Let's talk again later, Yama. Oh, and make sure to bring Rui, okay? No, no, no. You leave Rui out of your evil schemes and get your face out of here. I don't trust you. In fact, I think you're the killer from the beginning. I don't trust you one bit, you psychopath. Goodbye. See, I, I, I don't trust her, guys. I don't know about you, but uh, I don't trust her. No. No. Social media freaks can't trust those people. And like a tornado stalking its next target, she blazes out of the room. Thank God. I'm left completely dumbfounded with Yakiko, who's dancing around the room like he just won his mansion on the moon. I have a fan! I actually have a fan! A real fan! I wonder how long it'll be before I can pledge her to my service as my first true minion. Yeah, please do. Please, just, just, just you two go off on your own little journey. I honestly leave him and his fantasy of world domination and head to the cafeteria. It's more out of routine than actually feeling hungry. The shock of running into an old friend after four years might have something to do with that. Maybe I should be angrier at Misaki, but at the same time, who knows what happened with her and her mother. She seems pretty uncomfortable talking about it. That's because she's a murderer, I tell you. She's a murderer. I just know it. At least, she's here now. I guess that's all that matters. If Misaki wants to tell me, she will on her own time. The cafeteria is broad and beautiful, boasting polished surfaces and, surfaces and tidy, well-lit spaces. Modern furniture settles well on the brushed mahogany floor. Mahogany... Fuck, dude, you really do go to a rich school. What the fuck, dude? Students in pristine uniforms travel to and fro, scooping fro food from the extension buffet. Qu uh, counters around the perimeter of the cafeteria and returning to their friends. I spot Rui in the back corner of the cafeteria, staring up at the skylights with a thoughtful tilt to her head. Actually, this would be a perfect time to tell her about Misaki. Rui would be thrilled to see her again. Hey, Rui. I'm surprised he's talking to her. I, he, after what he did to her yesterday, I... I uh, yesterday. Bastard. She jumps slightly at the sudden sound, and only then do I remember that I'm supposed to be apologizing for being dramatic yesterday. Except, I've never been great at apologizing, or even good, or actually even mildly passable. Because you're a fucking cunt, that's why, yeah. Say, um, how are you? I'm doing okay. How was class? It was okay. 
I guess. Gosh darn it, kid. Oh, okay. We shuffle for a moment and I finally clear my throat. Um, about yesterday. It's okay, Yama. I know that seeing the boss must have brought up some memories. You were just lashing out. But I shouldn't have. No, I guess not. So, next time something like that happens, I reserve the right to slap you silly. Yes, please! Please! Beat the shit out of him next time he does it. At least that way I won't feel bad about it. And just like that, everything is right between us. What have I done to deserve a friend like this? Nothing! You terrible waste of human life. Alright, I shouldn't say that yet. He can still redeem himself. He still has time. There's a whole game out of us. Let's see what happens. Er, thanks. But, buy me lunch. What? You do order that much, dude. Come on. Aw, oh, come on. It's only fair. Typically, I wouldn't agree, but he was a terrible person yesterday. Come on. Come on. Ah. I mean, that was ridiculous. If I go into debt, I blame you for constantly mooching off me. Are you ever going to pay for your own food? Probably not. But you can't count those grocery trips. Because I ended up cooking everything for you. And yourself. Labor taxes. Let's go already. I'm hungry. But just as she reaches forward and pulls my arm to her side, we hear a very familiar voice from behind us. Oh, okay. It's probably that guy. I hope it's that guy. I hope it's not the girl. Well, well, well. What have we here? No, oh, oh, oh. It's, it's him. What voice did I have for him again? Like, uh, oh, yes. Something like this, I believe. All right. Well, let's go ahead and give it a go. We joke around in synchronization and promptly come face to face with Mr. Ryota. The only reasonable guy in this. No, I'm okay. Uh, Rui quickly squeaks and jumps away. Suddenly bashful. Oh, hi, Mr. Ryota. So, wait, she's in love with Mr. Ryota. <laughs> I see. That makes a lot more sense than being in love with this clown. Look at you two, the adorable childhood friends. Uh, finally getting together after years of unneeded drama. Thank you, Mr. I... I really like this guy. Ugh, I feel sick. What is this, some crappy anime? <laughs> what? We're not together? Yeah, dude, I'm pretty sure she's in love with you. I mean, didn't you see that face she made when she saw you? Now I want to go out with Yama in a million years. It's actually really adorable. Uh, I struggle to maintain a straight face. I know. I'm, I'm just too good for you. She snaps back into the Rui that the rest of the Academy knows her as witty, confident, and a touch of malice. She opens her mouth, no doubt to smite me with some comeback or another, but Mr. Rota breaks us up. Well, if I, don't c if I don't end up buffing my guts out, you guys will have to have the most adorable wedding in all of history. And there goes Rui. How, how, how can you say something like that? <laughs> Mr. Ryota. You're a teacher. You should know better. Oh, come on. You two will look back on this day. Mark my words. With a cheerful wave, he splits to the faculty express line. Those words sound fairly ominous. I can already imagine all the embarrassing stories he'd liberally share with the other wedding guests. We probably have after yesterday. So, so you really do like you? Can you get your? Can you straighten out your feelings, please? Please don't be one of those wish-washy main characters. Oh dear lord, you're not a, you're not a harem protagonist. Don't act like one, please. Just just act like Ro. Ro gets all the bitches. Alright? He's a real man. Be like him. We probably have so many people rolling in the aisles from laughter that Rui wouldn't even be able to walk properly. What the heck am I even thinking about? Wedding? Really? Fuck. <sighs> Mr. Rota is being his usual self, I see. Yep. Now he's got me thinking about. Nope. 
Not going there. Maybe now would be a good time to switch the topic. Oh right, I even have the perfect material. Hey, Rui. You're not gonna believe this, but I saw Miki today. Rui's face cuts to complete blankness in the space of a millisecond. It is really shocking news. Maybe I should have eased it a bit. She ended up transferring to the school, and we coincidentally uh, wound up in the same class. Dead silence. I finally start to feel a prickle of apprehension. We can hang out together again. We can... Did you talk to her? What? Of course, it's Miki. Rui, what's wrong? Aren't you happy? Well, no, I'm not. As far as I'm concerned, she has nothing to do with either of us anymore. Don't you remember? Oh, yeah, girl. Yeah, get that weirdo out of... Let's see if I get a choice of, to pick. I really, if I can't pick, I want to never see that Miki girl again. Yes. We were kids who held a stupid grudge for something beyond her control. Come on, we're older than that now. Oh, are we? She didn't really apologize, did she? Well, I pause for a moment. Rui's expression immediately darkens. I see that she didn't. And I know why. Because she wasn't there to see you fall apart. I don't think you remember, Yama. But you were in a really bad place after she left. Even to the point where... I mean, you... You know. But that wasn't because of Misaki. I mean... Yeah, but she triggered the whole thing. It's just, when I think about it, I get mad at her. Really mad. So it's probably best for both her and me if she stays away. So you're not going to be friends? Oh, come on, dude. Don't. This girl is too good for you, and you keep pushing buttons. Stop it. Get your life together. I know you're in high school, but you're about to graduate. You need to get your act together. The thought is so baffling that I can't help a stutter. In my mind, we'd always been a package deal. Me, Rui, Misaki. It was either all or nothing. That's because you're a retard. I mean, you're your own person, so you should hang out with whoever you want. But I can't be buddy-buddy with Misaki. Until she realizes what she's done. I never thought Rui, of all people, would be... She's not being irrational. Come on. Who would... I honestly wouldn't hang out with her, but not because of the reasons you guys wanted, just because I don't like her personality, but that's just me. How bad had I been, exactly? I'd never seen Rui so upset. At least not in a really long time. Sorry to be a downer. Why don't we just go grab some lunch? Um... How about you go ahead? I need to talk to Mr. Ryota. Okay. Wait, let me go back. Surprisingly, she doesn't ask me any more questions. She heads to the lunch line without a word. Maybe she also feels rotten inside like something has been lost forever. Wow, dude. That's... That's pretty edgy. I shake these thoughts and immediately locate Mr. Ryota, who's just popped out of the faculty line and, conveniently enough, is heading in my direction. He watches our separation with an eyebrow raised to his hairline. Oh? Aren't the newlyweds already running into trouble? I ignore this. Good time, Mr. Ryota. I wanted to ask you something. If the question is whether to officially ask Rui out, the answer is yes. Thank you! Oh dear lord, thank you for a character with common sense. <laughs> what? No, no, that's not the question, because this kid's an idiot. Oh, really? That's a bit boring. Rui and I aren't, you know, what? Never mind. I was wondering what, if it, what it means when you see someone you haven't seen in forever who you thought disappeared off the planet. It means exactly what you just said, your life actually is a crappy anime. <laughs> yes, a really crappy anime right now. Let's hope it picks up. I, I never said that. Oh, you didn't? Mr. Rota. Sorry, sorry, can't help it. Now, who's this person who 
you haven't seen in forever. She just transferred into my class this morning. Rui. Her, me, and we were really close when we were little back in our hometown, Seto. Transfer student, shouted friend. Don't even think about it. Come on, dude, it's a crap anime. Too late. My life is not a crappy anime. It's not. Yes, it is. You're right. It's a really crappy anime. <laughs> Bravo, good sir. Bravo. Ten stars. Best character of the game. He can't be beat. I don't care who comes up next. He cannot be beat. Oh, man. So, what's the problem? Well, I talked with her, and I think we'll be friends again, but Rui is jealous. What? No! What is this, junior high? Sorry, I'll oh, shut up. See, when Misaki, er, that's the transfer student, left, she accidentally triggered a giant depression state that basically left me in the dumps for a year. Shit, stop doing that, me. Sorry guys, I keep fumbling with my mouse, I guess. Oh, I don't remember much about it, to be honest, but Rui claims it was bad. Yama, yeah, when you can, come to my office today. I want to listen properly to you, and the cafeteria is not exactly an ideal environment. Well, I guess that Mr. Ryota got hired into his job for an actual reason. Uh, okay, I guess. I'll drop by at your school. Oh. During, really. Either way works. Now, off to lunch, you go. After lunch... Now, after lunch, you... Gotta eat before the bell rings. Young, growing boys need all the nutrition they can get. He can't sound like the wise, all-knowing teacher when he just implied it was fine for me to ditch school. See you later, Mr. Rota. But seriously, this kid should listen to this guy. This guy has life experience unlike him. <laughs> Come on, listen to your elders, kid. He only responds with a casual wave before he saunters off over to the nearest table, chatting easily with a group of students. Which is weird, me saying, t respect your elders, kid. I'm only 20 years old, which, by the way, I just turned 20 today. Today's my 30th. I'm probably going to upload this later today. But, you guys. There, now you know. That's why I was saying 19 in the last video, 20 in this one. I snag a plate of food and search for Rui. But she's nowhere in sight. Guess that conversation took a little longer than I originally intended. Oh, I quickly scarf my food down and return to the classroom. Yeah. Great job losing another opportunity. Alright class, let's take secondary roll before we head to the courtyard. What? We have more pee? The teacher's whole teacher's halfway through rolling her eyes before she catches herself. I guess it's not good an example to roll your eyes in front of your students. Alright. No, Yakiko. Today is career day. As has been announced over the PA for the past three days. Afternoon classes are cancelled, so that third year may explore possible future comp uh, bleh, occupations with specialists. Oh, right. Questions of the future. A writing prompt about our dream job. Now career day. I think I'm sensing a pattern here. Yeah, you need to figure out what you're gonna do with your fucking life, kid. We're already running a little late. So let's make the quick this quick. Anyone missing? Oh, by the way guys, you don't actually have to decide once you finish high school. You, you got two years of college before you even have to worry about what profession you're going into. Good luck. Nope. That prompts us to glance around. I think he's right, ma'am. Everyone's here. Everyone except Misaki, who apparently is at her job. I know it doesn't say it like that, but I decided to say it like that. Time to do some not-so-subtle recon. Uh, teacher, where's that girl? The one sitting by the window. The teacher waves her hand dismissively. Special circumstances, anyone else? Despite myself, I feel a prick of curiosity. Special circumstances? What kind of circumstances could warrant such an offhand dismissal from the teacher? I thought most teachers loathe making exceptions for mandatory events. 
Just what could Misaki's job be? As the teacher continues to survey the classroom, I feel a nudge against my arm. Okay, I'm reading this way too dramatically. <laughs> I'm surprised you brought it up. What? Usually, you wouldn't say anything even if you noticed. You would have thought it to be much too much trouble. Her words are remarkably neutral. It's awkward. It feels like a trap. I think you should stop pretending like you actually know me. Or that you have a brain. Oh, what? You're insufferable. I think he is insufferable, but uh... Well, then again, I can't say if you're much better or not. Maybe you're just treating him that way because it's him. After all, he is a terrible human being. But, that's alright. She storms to the back of the room in a huff. I'm insufferable. She's done far, far worse. And she's still judging me. Oh. 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 That's a word. That's a word for you, my friend. That's a word for you. What a hypocrite. Alright, looks like everyone else is here. To the courtyard! Destiny awaits! There are more than a few rolled eyes, but everyone obediently files out of the classroom. Our class pours into the courtyard, which currently resembles a crowded street market. Columns of booths are set in orderly lines, each attempting to outshine the others with progressively more outrageous signage and progressively louder music. I wonder if they're... I wonder if they've got a booth for my future job. Come to think of it, in all the 203 times he's talked about his dream, he's never once mentioned his future job. Just all the things he'll own. Oh, and what might that be? Isn't it obvious? With my stunning looks and all? So, a trash can- Oh! Damn! Is that even a job? Of course it's a job! Oh, well, no. I want to be a model. That's for it. Well, it's not as silly as it seems. I mean, seeing how he just believed that being a trash can was a profession, he can't have a job that questions- that requires him to think. He also can't have a job that requires social interaction, he just repel people instead of attracting them. Those are his two biggest flaws, and modeling doesn't need either. As for his looks, hmm, I hate to admit it, but he's not bad looking. He'd probably be able to land himself a girlfriend if he could just keep quiet. It almost sounds like a serious plan. Yahiko, my friend, I'm glad you finally realized the cruel truth. <laughs> what are you talking about? I'm just saying that it's a good idea, especially coming from you. Isn't it? Once I, once I became once I become famous, the entire world will be able to witness my magnificence. I'll be on TV, the internet, advertising blimps, basically everywhere. On second thought, maybe it's a terrible idea. Well, if you don't mind me, I'm off to meet my destiny. And with that, he skips off into the crowd, leaving me awkwardly leaning against the wall like some kind of delinquent. Wait, you're not? You're not a delinquent? <laughs> I don't know about that one. I'm not really sure what to do. I'll be wasting my time if I look around, but I'll be wasting my time if I stay here. I think you're wasting your time by existing. Oh, wait, no shit. I'm falling into his pace. What a conundrum. You there! I turn to the source of the voice, a man in a medical coat, standing in front of a booth, boost, uh, boasting the holographic sign, Way Forward Pharmaceuticals, Hospital Division. I'm guessing he's a doctor. Oh, uh, you were just becoming a doctor? Bodies, open wounds? Yeah, no. Sorry, I don't think I could deal with the pressure of being a doctor. If that's what you're worried about, then don't worry. I'm a heart surgeon, and I get an entire team of people helping me during the operations. Well, if I have people helping me... Scalpel, please. <laughs> nah. What do you mean, nah? I thought I was supposed to do all the cutting in this time. 
that doesn't matter. It sure does! See what's going on here, man? You wanna take all the credit? Well, guess what? That ain't happening. What are you talking about? I'm the doctor here. Doctor? The patient is in critical condition. If you don't act fast, he's going to die. The patient is dying. Dang it! Give me the scalpel! Whoa there, don't be getting your scrubs in a bunch. I feel like this guy's an idiot. He really thinks this is what it'd be like to be a doctor. <laughs> doctor, the patient is dead. See, look what you did. Look what... It... Yeah, I don't think being a doctor is right for me. Are you sure? We've got a great internship program. I'm good. Thanks, though. Another nearby booth catches my eye. A multicolored sign claims that it's from the National Education Institute. Behind the booth table is a tall woman in glasses who is speaking animately to a small group of students. Don't you feel that we have a duty to equip the next generation? In this society, knowledge is power, and we need to ensure that our successors have the power to move forward. My job is the best and the most beneficial, and there are no downsides whatsoever. Yeah, yeah, been there, heard that. Don't your students annoy you, or tire you out? Well, I've had some ups and downs in my career, of course. The more uh, difficult students may be perplexing at first, but when you preserve, you always end up getting those students back on the right path. Is that so? A teach. What's well, 5 plus 7? This is high school, Mr. Ikari. Not primary school. You should have mastered addition by now. But teach! Excuse me, Mr. Kurogane. Smoking is not prohibited on campus. Hand those over. Smoking is not prohibited. Oh, not permitted. Okay. I read that wrong and that made it come out as meaning something completely opposite. So it's not permitted. Okay, sorry. Shh! You ain't the boss of me, kid! Kid, I'm your teacher! You're shorter than me, kid! And that makes you a kid, kid. Alright, that's it. You're staying after class. You've got detention to serve. Says who? Says you? You couldn't even take on a diseased chicken with one claw tied behind its tail. That's why can't you be the that eloquent on your essays? Teacher? What? What's wrong? What? Are you crying? Again? What for? Oh, you're angry at me. I I'm sorry. I'm so terrible, I can't... Hey, 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 don't cry. Yeah, I, I don't think I have enough patience to deal with students. Christ, dude, do you see the worst in every single opportunity and, like, imagine it completely unrealistically? Like, this... I worry about this guy's view on life. Like, he doesn't see life as it is. He sees it as, like, some made-up world that he imagines. I meander through down the row of booths. Uh, <laughs> apathetically peering at any that seem mildly entertaining. One man with remarkably bushy, with a remarkably bushy mustache, raises his fist in the air, yelling at the top of his lungs. Do you love Japan? Join the Japanese Defense Force today. You know that's so unlike the American Army. In our military, you cannot have facial hair. Especially not a big, bushy one. They, they think that, like, you know, it's not clean cut or whatever. Wow, I thought those kind of diehard patriots only existed on TV. Any man who's able to follow orders can be seen as a hero of Japan. If you're still alive. Wait, the JSDF doesn't really fight too much, do they? Like, when was the last time the JSDF actually fought a war? Grenade! Cover it, soldier. What? But we could just run away. Jump on the grenade, or I'll have you court-martialed for insubordination. But I'll die. All the better. Hop on it. Hop to it, rather. Yeah, not happening. Seriously, this guy... This guy's an idiot. 
I'm sorry, but I can't keep my mouth shut about this guy. He just, every few seconds, he makes me call him an idiot. Uh, I turn away from the booth. Everything I see is equally up unpromising. Yeah, because you can't view jobs as they properly are. Do you have a knack for cooking? Why not apply to Lyon, Lyon Culinary School? Gather here, engineers, mathematics, fellow countrymen. The biggest digital corporation in the world, Lament. Lament. Lemniscate. However, you fuck that word. Has positions open for you? Have you always wanted to help the hurting? Join us at the Cumulus Therapy Center and transform the world one life at a time. A quick glance in the other direction reveals that I seem to be the only one having trouble. Yeah, because you're fucking blind as shit. I find Elizabeth in deep conversation with a police officer, just a few feet away. Wouldn't have thought her to be that type. Maybe she's sucking up to them to, so that they'll let her off for corporate fraud. Meh. I can't really judge her. At least she's found something that she's interested in. Me, on the other hand, well, I have nothing. What's up? Can't find your last calling? What? I turn to the source of the voice of a scraggly man slumped against a rickety folding chair. A worn beanie plopped on his head and... Uh... Thread... Threadbare trench coat? Okay. Uh, thrown over his shoulders. There's no sign on his booth. Is Hubble a legitimate career? Ha, huh, youngster. These days, you hold the, your future in your hands, and you don't even know what to do with it. You're lucky, you know. There was a time when people didn't have the luxury of choosing their career. Upon second glance, I noticed that there are several rolling racks of books settled in the back of the booth. There doesn't seem to be any rhythm or reason to their genre, science fiction, mystery, fantasy, or adult. But they're all the same name. Are you a writer? He smiles when I ask him this. <laughs> what? Surprised? Who do you think I was? An adventurer? Globetrotter? A homeless guy, actually. He throws back his head and laughs. <laughs> You've got a lot. You got life. I can't wait to read your stories. Somehow, I don't think that being a writer uh, would fit me. Somehow, I don't think you think anything would fit you. Oh, somebody help me. Whatever shall I do? Fear not, generic damsel in distress. I'm the hero. I lost the previous battle. So, this is the heroic career match where I'm guaranteed to win. How fortunate. After you win this final battle. I shall bestow you with an obli obli obligatory smooch of victory. Ha! You can't just ignore the villain. I got your girl, Yama. Oh, spare us your evil gloating. It'll be o only lead to your downfall. But, but I gotta. Give me a motive rant so that we understand your identity as a tragic villain. Nah. No. I'll just put that as a footnote. Okay, I tire of this needless banter. I've actually written the princess's backstory so that she's a badass in distress. What? But you don't even foreshadow that. Too bad. I need to move the plot forward. Oh, by the way, guys, about the voice, I did it because he's really being flamboyant with these stories, so he gets a flamboyant voice. Congratulations. Hiya! No! Fuck, my throat is just too torn up to do anything more than that, guys. Yeah, I don't think I can come up with original material. That's why you just rip off li real life, you know? Um, thanks, but no thanks. He shrugs apathetic apathetically as I walk away. A nearby small group of students catches my eye. They've gathered in front of a man in a long, sweeping lab coat. Although his voice is placid, there lies an undercurrent of power in every word he says. 
Life is a fragile thing. Yeah, he sounds like an emo, so I'm gonna make him have an emo voice. There is an unspeakable number of ways for the human body to fail, and even more for it to be broken. Death was accepted as an inevitable part of life, a natural stage in the cycle, this world. But it doesn't have to be that way. Oh, did I, did I misjudge him? Sorry, dude. If I misjudged you, I'm sorry. The man and his lab coat straightens as the students break into hurried whispers. Through research? Oh, wait. <clears throat> Through research, we can create medicine that fights diseases and treats disorders, extending our lives exponentially and maybe indefinitely. Ah, so he's a medical re- oh, wait, sorry. <laughs> he fixes his gaze on each individual in the crowd. Not in a hostile manner, but certainly in an unnerving one. A day may come when we can defy death. His eyes land on me. The intelligent arc of his brow and the commending line of his jaw shift slightly as he examines me. I feel frozen beneath his piercing gaze. It isn't exactly uncomfortable, just strange. Eventually he turns away, adjusting the golden glasses that are settled on the bridge of his nose. If you seek to make a lasting influence on the world, join us at Way Forward Pharmaceuticals in the research division. Together we can accomplish the impossible and prevent the inevitable. The crowd of students breaks into applause, their faces agape and wonder. I can only scoff, cause you're fucking pessimistic as all hell. No one can defy death. Anyone who thinks otherwise is just delusional. No, no. <laughs> you talked about a hypocrite earlier. See, this is why I called you a hypocrite. You're the delusional one. Don't you understand that? You have no right to call anyone else delusional. As I turn away from the way forward booth, the PA homes to life. Attention students, Mary Nori will be speaking at the center stage in five minutes. The students around me gasp audibly, breaking into frantic whispers. Mary Nori? Here? In person? Uh, school's important, you know. Why wouldn't he come? Come on, let's get a good spot. I follow the massive throng of students gathering around the courtyard. The courtyard center stage. Sure enough, Mas Masaru Inori, the ever-popular mayor of Isamu, is in the flesh. He gives the students a cordial wave from behind an impenetrable line of security guards. Alright, so I'm going to cut it off here for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode, and I shall see you next time. And as always, put your comments in below what you think about the episode. And I love you all. Have a great day.